What is going on guys? Welcome back to Bucketology and yesterday we had some fantastic action. Peak entertainment was this Warriors Suns game till about two and a half quarters in. I was thinking man this is so lit game of the year but something happened in that middle of the third quarter where Klay Thompson just got extremely cocky. He was waving the four fingers in Devin Booker's face. A lot of jawing, talking, and they got this guy out of there. I mean, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree. Obviously, we can't hear exactly what he was saying, but if he was just telling Devin Booker, yo, look at the hands, talk to the hands, you know, I don't really necessarily think that uh, justifies an ejection, but hey, maybe he just wouldn't stop. The refs were just like, yo, shut up. Let's play basketball and he just couldn't put his hand down he was like four four of them count the fingers this video is not gonna be about clay thompson or the warriors who actually got pounded straight up murdered after clay thompson decided to get the hell out of there the warriors actually just couldn't score the basketball as soon as this happened it's like they kind of ignited a fire in the phoenix suns the suns were looking like a well-oiled machine they were looking like a 64 win team even though cam johnson completely sold a parlay of mine i just needed him to hit two threes this guy got six chances uh alleged sharpshooter couldn't get it done that's too bad but even with this guy having a bad game, even with Chris Paul being extremely old, the Suns absolutely routed the Golden State defending champs Warriors, who honestly, I don't really think they cared about this game that much as soon as Klay Thompson came out of there. At least that's how it appeared. Steve Kerr definitely has some tinkering he has to do with his uh, bench lineups when he just throws Jordan Poole out there, tells him to go one on five. Hey, I don't know how much of that is just Jordan Poole saying, let me have this dance to any defender that wants to try to guard him. Chris Paul is my topic of conversation today. And let me just start out by saying the Phoenix Suns look great actually a lot better than I expected them to look. It might be weird that I'm making this video about Chris Paul, but I think I just need to get ahead of the curve, ahead of you guys and the rest of the media people who will be pushing this message in a couple months, maybe more than a couple months, because hey, Chris Paul can start for the rest of this season. He can play 30 plus minutes a game. He can close games and this team can finish with a top four seed, 50 plus wins, have a great regular season, and maybe even sneak into the all-star game. Hey, I don't really know about that one. That's kind of what this is about. Chris Paul starting the year averaging 10 and 10, four games in. It's not just me looking at the full stats of this game. I'm looking at the guy, he looks a little bit chunky, looks a little bit old i mean as soon as he turned 37 last season it doesn't really usually happen this way you know usually we get a gradual fall from grace chris paul was an absolute maestro up to this point he got his team to the nba finals just the year before and he was 36 in those nba finals so for him to turn 37 and just magically lose all his powers i'm not really sure what it is but just the fact that you got a guy at best six feet tall he's not jumping anywhere he's not sticking great defense anymore he just doesn't have that same quickness and yet, he is still playing at an all-star level at age 36, but at age 37, I'm sorry to say, it's just not the same player. I don't know why it had to happen like this. Look, I love Chris Paul, and he was one of my favorite players when I was younger, when he was on the Clippers. He just can't be featured to the level that he is in this team's offense, defense, just on the floor in general, playing 30 minutes a game, having him close games is not a recipe for success. If this team wants to win a championship this year, and I know a lot of people might be rolling their eyes, the prospect of that possibility, like these guys don't have it in them. We saw what happened last year. It was just complete exposure. Well, if they move more away from Chris Paul, try to find a replacement, try to find new lineups that feature other players that are more capable of playing defense, shooting threes, being guarded. I mean, last night you got Draymond on him and just not even respecting him, just sagging off, allowing Draymond to play in the lane and just play help defense. And Chris Paul got some open looks because of that. But if this guy's only function is just to be a spot up shooter because guys are leaving him wide open, I'm sorry to say he's not worth playing that many minutes. I know he is an incredible basketball mind. I know his leadership quality is out of this world. It always has been, but the ability is just not the same as what it used to be, and he will be exploited in playoff series. I'm not going to act like Patrick Beverly was wrong when he went on that rant last year after the playoffs. Yes, he came off as an extremely salty hater, but he made some great points. Teams that want to go at Chris Paul on that offensive end, and teams that don't play the drop coverage in the pick and roll, allowing him to get to his spot. You saw what happened when a Dallas Maverick team said, Chris Paul, we're going to make you score points to beat us. Chris Paul, we're going to make you guard us. You see how it went. I mean, they totally figured the guy out. The blueprint is out there, not just to beat the Suns, but to beat Chris Paul if he is in the lineup. He is a liability that can be exploited by great teams. I'm not saying he's a liability in general, 
But when you get to those tough stages, those conference finals, semifinals, games, what have you, playing the cream of the crop, the best of the best, and in a stack west, as always, it is just not going to get these guys all the way to the championship round of the NBA finals if this guy is one of your top featured players on the team. So whatever the Suns have to do to make this transition, it is very important that they start doing it, I think, sooner rather than later so that their players are equipped to play how they are best suited to play in a playoff atmosphere, whether that means you're giving eight and more time touches, whether that means you're looking for Bridges and Cam Johnson to be greater offensive contributors, whether that means you are featuring Cameron Payne maybe in a starting or closing role, a change has to be made because in the end, this is not a team that wins a championship, one that has Chris Paul as one of your super high usage players. I mean, we saw in the first game of the season, this team looked like they were about to be embarrassed once again by the Dallas Mavericks down 20 points. They come all the way back win the game, and guess how they won this game? With Chris Paul on the bench, they had Damian Lee out there playing the role of the savior. Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. But look, it's just gonna take the other guys with the wisdom of Chris Paul, but from the bench. He's just not going to be the guy making the shot, being Mr. Clutch. I just don't know what it is about that number 37, that age 37, because last year in the regular season, he was amazing in the clutch. Percentages were off the charts, but I mean, just watching him out there, he looks like a completely different player. He doesn't look like he has that same edge that he had last year, even. Father Time is a hell of an opponent for everybody. I know LeBron James is probably the best example of an athlete going up against Father Time, but Chris Paul is 37 also. Isn't LeBron, I don't know if LeBron's 37 or 38. He's played more years in the league, but they're about the same age. The fact that Chris Paul has been this effective through the age of 36, 37 is an incredible thing. I just can't think of another guy that's been his size that plays the game without this jaw-dropping athletic ability. It's just predicated on pure skill and maybe some dirty plays here and there, but Chris Paul throughout his career and his prime was an amazing two-way player, and he's probably going to be a hell of a coach, but it helps to have him on the court for times, but to be relied on to the level that they probably will rely on him, it's just not what's going to translate to a championship. And I'm here wondering if Monty Williams has it in him to really make that adjustment over the course of a season, whether it's making a trade, whether it's just allocating minutes, allocating usage to different places, because he didn't want to bench Chris Paul last year in the playoffs, even if he should have. Like Patrick Beverly saying, you know, he was scared or maybe not scared the right word, but Chris Paul has a lot of pull, a lot of power, a lot of influence, and, and he needs to be out there as far as he is concerned in those big moments. But when you're the coach of the year, when you have to make these big decisions that decide to make or break a championship, you got to make the right call. And this year, Monty Williams can't afford to make that same mistake. So that first game was a sign, I think, of things to come when they put him on the bench in that fourth quarter and come back. And Chris Paul to realize, hey, you know, I don't need to be out there to help my team to win. Maybe I just need to be on the bench and I can try to help my team win from there because his influence still remains regardless of how much he's playing him being in the locker room him being on the bench him being on the team it's still going to help his players to play as best as they can and play the right way the smart way to win each and every game yeah i just i can't see him on the floor being that same effective player that he has been throughout his career and you know it's it's, it's a little bit sad and and chris paul i know he has not been the greatest playoff performer big game performer at the end of the day in these biggest games of your career what do you have to show for it but he's also been one of the most unlucky players as well it just runs into an injury in the playoffs it seems like every single year and uh you know hopefully there is some sort of redemption at some point but at this point it's just hard for me to see him coming back into that all-star role and I really don't see him making it this year or ever again as unfortunate as that sounds but Chris Paul has been a hell of a Hall of Fame career and I have no doubt that he can still contribute like I've been saying to a team like this but at the end of the day it's just time to move on to move out of that level of role that he has been playing so far with the Phoenix Suns so that's gonna do it let me know what you think about Chris Paul uh, what are you seeing from him do you disagree or agree with what I'm saying uh, let, let me know so uh yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I got another video coming out today, Trey Murphy. Uh, so check that out as well. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Peace.